Today's video, five things to consider before going to an RV show. I'm Bob. And I'm Hillary. And we're the Van Caskies. We have owned two RVs. We owned a Four Rise 18T, which was way too small for us. Definitely too small. Yep. And we currently own a Thor Tolaro 20A. Yep. That we call Mr. Lemon. Yes. We've had a few issues with him. Yes. And if you need some backstory, if you're new here and you need some backstory of how he came to get the name Mr. Lemon, click any of these videos, any of them. It'll tell you. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button. Yes. It doesn't cost you anything. It just helps out the channel and you yeah. stay connected. Yeah, we appreciate it. With all that, we're gonna go ahead and get to the RV show and get started. Okay, so the first thing that you need to consider before you go to an RV show is... Do you want to be full-time or part-time in your RV? Yeah, that's super important for you to decide because there are a lot of pros and cons and factors that go into what you need to purchase. And you really need to know if you're going to be living in it full-time or if you're going to be only using it part-time. Yeah. Yeah, if you're just a weekend warrior and you're going to take it out and just enjoy it on your time off and just occasionally here and there, mm -hmm. there are certain sacrifices that you can make that would, yeah. you know, not affect your quality of life. Yeah. But it's a much tougher decision when you're, you know, living in it full time. Some of those sacrifices be can become just overwhelming and you end up just having a terrible time. So understanding if you want to be full time or part time does make a huge difference in you know which trajectory you need to take. So if you want to be full-time in your RV, there's a couple things that, you know, essentially you need to consider. Are you going to be boondocking? Are you going to be staying at RV parks? Mm -hmm. There's using, harvest hose. There's harvest hose. There's all different options for you to park your RV. Yep. And so you need to think about that. Right. Like we said um, at the beginning, we own a class B. <sighs> We're both six feet tall. Well, he's six one oh. and it's a tight space. And so living and doing life in the class B can be a little more tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it also can be a little more rewarding because yeah. you can get to some places that, you know, you can't take a big giant class A yep. and you can do a few more things stealthily um, in a B that you can't do in an A. But yeah, I think it's just, it's <sighs> a critical question. It's a critical question. Full-time or part-time. Because I think if you're full-time storage, storage is a big issue. Yeah, if you are full time, yeah, the storage requirements that you're going to need just for your stuff, the yeah. everyday things that you need, yeah. everything clothes. from pots and pans and clothes, and yeah, you, you just are going to have more things because yeah. well, you're living out of it. Yeah. Whereas you know, if you're just weekending it, you know, you might not need something, or you can just take a couple of things because you know, end up going back home and you know, in your normal house. Yeah. With all that said, let's go ahead and talk about part time. Like, what would be your biggest concern? that you need to think about if you're only going to need an RV for, like you said, being a weekend war warrior. I, for me, I think the biggest challenge is going to be storage. Yeah. And different kind of storage. Right. Not internal storage. Th that's correct. Storage of the vehicle. You know, if you're in a hot, wet or cold climate mm -hmm. and by hot, by hot or cold, I mean extremes. Like yeah. if you're in like Phoenix, you're going to want to store something that's covered, that's protecting it from the sunlight. Yeah. Well, and what are your options? It's it's going to be uh, enclosed, it's going to be um, covered, yep. and then just basically Uncovered. like an empty lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like you said, if it's hot, like 115 all summer, you're probably going to want enclosed storage. It's true. Things just get destroyed from the heat mm -hmm. and the sunlight. Your mm -hmm. Everything from the caulking will crack from the UV and the heat. Mm -hmm. Things mm -hmm. inside, like we've seen in ours, like things start to peel and fall apart. Yeah. So that that heat and that sunlight can really, really damage your RV and you want to protect it, especially if you're only using it a couple of times a year. Yeah. And then also if you're in cold weather, say you're up in Minnesota or even Alaska, right? Yeah. Both places we've lived. Yep. Yep. Same thing. You're probably going to want to try and find enclosed, enclosed yep. storage. There you have to worry about like water lines freezing and making sure that you blow out like your, your heaters and all that kind of stuff just to make sure you don't have any damage from things freezing and expanding. Yeah. And so when we looked at prices for enclosed storage, even just locally in Phoenix, 
the prices start at three seventy five. Yeah, a month. It, it gets expensive quick. Yeah. I mean, now there are some better deals where you can get just like we were saying, like a, a gravel parking lot to park yeah. in. Yeah. But then you lose all those other benefits. And this is why we think this is so important of thinking if you are if you're full time, you're driving around, you can park it under shade. There's all these different things. But if you're if you're part time and you have to store it somewhere, you really need to think about where or can you start store it in your driveway? You know, that's one reason why we went with the class B. We could store it in our driveway mm -hmm. and our HOA allows for that. So there's another thing, right? If you want to just, you know, get a class B and store it in your, in your driveway, you have to see if your HOA allows for that. But you're not going to get in class A in your driveway unless you have a really long driveway. I mean, and some then, people can. Yeah. That's Definitely true. not a, just a normal size driveway. That's right. Yeah. So you, this is why we're saying things to consider before you even come to the show, because it's so important for you to know the additional costs that you might incur incur, and also where to start looking because it's, yeah. there's so many cool options and there's so much to see. It can be yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. I think that's all we have to say about full-time versus part-time and just the additional payment you might have if you do, um, do part-time, which leads us into the number two on our list of things that you need to consider before going to an RV show, which is budget. You really, really, really need to know what is your budget? Because when you get here, everything looks pretty. Everything looks like you want it. And so figuring out what you can afford, what you want to afford before you get here, before the salespeople kind of like, ah! <laughs> Very true you know, Very is true. important. Yep. So that, that is important. Having a budget, staying in that budget, it can be really difficult, but it will also kind of coupled with, you know, part-time versus full-time really help kind of guide some of those decisions for you. Yeah. And so let's kind of go look at what, what could possibly be in someone's budget. Okay. So we are currently in a class C. I actually think this is a very, very like nice class C because I don't think they're always this expensive. What we're currently in is a 2024 Quantum Thor class C for $105,000, which seems really expensive to me for a class C. Look at this. This is what you get for $100,000 for a class C, which you're more than likely not going to be able to park in your driveway. So again, you buy this and you're part time. You're going to have to think about storage. But if you're full time, hey, you're good to go. But you have a bed up here. You got two really cool bucket seats. Oh, this is nice, man. You got a sink. You got a stove. Oh, man. You're spoiled with an oven. All the storage. You got a microwave. You got a really big fridge and freezer. Oh, man. I'm jealous. You guys know we have a class B. So this must be uh, your bed that kind of comes out as a class C. It has the slide that comes out, but this would be your bed. You have this big bathroom. You have this nice shower. I'm a little tall for it. Oh, it's a teeny. Look at this little guy though. You think they can do something bigger than that. But anyways, so this is kind of what you get for $100,000 for a class C. Let's go check out a B, an A, and a trailer. So this is a fifth wheel. This is only 38,000 and it's actually quite nice. Very spacious. You know, you've got bunk beds here in the back. Similar to the class C, you have your sink with a stove, a full size microwave, refrigerator and freezer, lots of seating. You have a bedroom up top, which you can take a look at. So you can see, I think this is a king size bed. Your bathroom. bathroom. You know. So you get a lot of space with this fifth wheel. One of the issues is you have to have a second vehicle. So you're gonna need something that's powerful enough to tow a fifth wheel. And that can be good and bad. You have a secondary vehicle to drive around, you know, when you get to your destination, but it's another expense that you have to have. So you're probably gonna need a, you know, 60 to $80,000 truck to be able to pull something like this. All right, let's go take a look at a class A and compare it to this. So now we're in a class A and the price of this class A is $123,000. It looks like it used to be $175,000, whatever that means, but it's $123,000. So look at all the space you get with a class A. This is amazing. Nice big bed, doors that shut. So it's a bedroom, you get a TV storage in there. Nice big bathroom. You got your 
really big microwave. You got your stove, your oven, storage. Wow. And what I love is you get a whole table apart from everything else. So you can sit here and play cards and eat dinner and whatever. And you get a couch. All I'm going to say is, man, this is the life. Big, big, big seats up front. But to me, the drawback is, is this is probably pretty hard to drive. At least for me, it would be. And it's so big. The pro is for a lot of space. I mean, 123,000, it's not too bad. The con is, you know, where are you gonna park it? With all of these, there's gonna be pros and cons. But anyways, this is your class A. Let's go look at a class B. So we found the most inexpensive class B we could find, which is $79,000. Not that that's cheap, but this is what you get in a class B. It's quite small. You have a nice, very small bathroom in the back with a shower. You have your galley, sink and stove. Your couch, I guess you'd call it, that converts into a bed and two swivel chairs. That's it. <laughs> There's a little bit of storage up top, but nothing fancy. It's quite small. It has the basics, everything that you're going to need, but it is just really small. So those are some budget options in the class A, B, C, and trailer. That gives you kind of a look at what you're going to get for the size, the money, and some of the options that you may have at the different classes. Which leads us right into number three, which is space and size. What are your needs? What are your wants? Now you kind of know the different prices, you know, for the different classes available. Now we really do need to talk about space and what do you need? So we were just in a class B showing you how small and tight that is, but it did have all the essentials. Now we're in a class A and this monstrosity <laughs> is gigantic. You've got a huge slide. I think it's the entire side. Wow. I mean, the, you... the, the floor, so the ground level is about five feet off the ground. So this thing is incredibly tall, very spacious, very nice, like fittings, fit and finish. You've got a full size refrigerator. Wow. You have a, a dedicated like bathroom for just the toilet. Wow. I'm actually impressed. I've never seen this one. You have a shower that like a dedicated shower. It has a legitimate bedroom with a slide out and a, it looks like a king size bed. Wow. I mean, this thing is huge. And I don't even know, this is some big giant like commercial vehicle, looks like a semi truck. And it just has everything. Some of them I've seen, oh, oh it does. It does. It comes with a washer and a dryer. I mean, it literally has everything. And if you're gonna be living in it, these might be some things that you want. But if you're just weekending it, you, know, you don't need a washer and dryer for the weekend. Yeah. But just something to consider. Size. That size does matter. <laughs> and, and for this, you're going to pay $184,000. Yes. It, this is used at $184,000. So it's not cheap, but it's actually relatively, I hate to say it, inexpensive compared to some of the other things that are brand new. And for this big of a vehicle, it's yeah. pretty well priced. Yeah, so if you need this much space, you're gonna pay this kind of price. But it's a legit commercial vehicle with air brakes, a big giant diesel engine. Wow, that's impressive. But it does have a nice fireplace. <laughs> yep, so anyways. Just wanna make the point one last time, size matters. Does it? Because we have a class B. And this is what you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> Quattro. Number four, build quality. Uh, I We have talked about this a lot on our channel, how build quality matters. Poor quality means not only are you gonna be paying for repairs, dealing with warranty issues and all those kind of things, but it's just going to be a huge nuisance. It's going to prevent you from being out on the road and enjoying your vehicle, whatever you choose to purchase. So you need to be aware of the manufacturer, who you're selecting, and um, you know, understanding also who owns certain brands. Um, we have said some unfavorable things about Thor in the past. There's some unique challenges that go along with their service. There are other manufacturers out there that are a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit higher quality. Things like Coachman, uh, Winnebago, Pleasure, uh, Way? Pleasure Way. Those are some smaller, um, oh, what was the other one? Um, it's out of Canada, shoot. 
They make the Unity, but anyway, it doesn't matter. There are some other manufacturers out there that do some really, really nice high quality work. And so you just need to be aware of what manufacturer you're buying, the quality reputation that they have, because you ultimately will have to deal with all of the repairs, all the warranty work. And along with that, you need to be thinking about who you buy it from. So if you're buying from a smaller manufacturer, there may be some limited access to service. Whereas if you are buying from a much larger, you know, like a Thor, um, you might have more service options across the country. So it's just... Whether well, it's of, good service or bad service, yeah, you know, we don't know. That's a whole nother thing, but and I, and it, I do your wanna, options. Yeah, I do want to highlight, there are people that actually have good experiences with Thor. So we are one experience. That's true. I'm just... We have a lemon. Recognizing, yes, that Mr. Lemon has provided lots of opportunities for us to talk to people at La Mesa and with Thor. <laughs> so all that to say, do your research, know, you know, which, you know, manufacturers that you're looking at and the build quality, you know, join some forums online and do some research to see, you know, what you're getting and understand that. Yeah. So, you, so you know what you're getting and, and know some of the other experiences other people are having. So one last tip, when you go and you start looking at all these, you know, vehicles that are at RV shows, there's going to be lots of people coming in and out of them. There's potentially going to be some, you know, damage, wear and tear, those kind of things. Just know that that's part of it being at a show. And so what you see is what you get. So if you see something that's, you know, broken or tweaked or not, not perfect, you're, you're buying it that way. Now yeah. you can maybe get it fixed through later. warranty and things like that later yeah. on. We learned the hard way because when we bought our first class B, that Thor Rise 18T that we bought, um, the floor had stains on it and was pilling in an area. And I was such a newbie. I, I remember asking the, the sales guy, hey, this will all get fixed, right? And I felt like he said yes. And guys, when we went to pick it up and do our final inspection, nothing was fixed. And I was so shocked. And I was like, wait, I thought all this gets fixed. And, and it, of course, the guy that sold it to us wasn't the guy that we went and talked to for the next step. So the the guy that we talked to for the next step had no idea what I was talking about. It was like, no, 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 none of that got fixed. We don't do that. You later on can get that fixed through your warranty, fingers crossed. But I mean, they're going to clean it up and stuff, but they're not going to go through and fix every little thing, at least in our experience. So while we've been standing here filming, I've kind of noticed like this crack is not perfect. <sighs> it's much tighter up here than it is over here. Incredibly small, like, Little detail. detail. But if this bothers you, like it would me, you will stare at this <laughs> and you will loathe the fact that this little crack is here. And it's not perfect. And it's not perfect. So just know that it's not going to get better when you buy this. So number five, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, yeah. but number five is service and kind of all the, the things that go along with that. So like the locations, uh, maintenance, the costs associated with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there's a lot of options and it, it kind of gets back to that whole idea of the quality and which one you pick yeah. because you know, there are some great service centers scattered all over the United States, but if you are in, I'm sorry, we haven't found one, but yes, <laughs> true. There's rumors there's of rumors. Great, great ones. Yeah. But I know that um, it can be a real problem if yeah. you are like in a remote area trying to find a place for service. Yeah. And so that's just something to think through as you are, you know, looking yeah. at what you're going to buy, like, yeah, where are you going to be driving it? Are there service centers in that area? You know, yeah. just, just understanding yeah. all of that. For example, we bought from La Mesa, mm -hmm. not once, but twice. Yes. <laughs> and um, in all fairness, our first van, we really didn't have many issues. We only have one issue. So our second van, a thousand issues, you know, but anyways, we've had to use La Mesa. That's who our warranty is through. That's what we've been doing. You know, we've had a couple of good experiences mm -hmm. and we've had quite a few bad experiences. And so that matters though, when, you know, before you get to the RV show, if you're gonna actually buy one in an RV show, see who who would do the maintenance, right? Right? Like, is it, let me say, yep. is it, is it uh, Camper Land or Camper? So, yeah, there's there's like Lazy Day, Lazy Day. there's La Mesa, there's like National RV Camp Center. Camp World is one maybe? Camp World I, is I one. I might be making so, that up. So there's, and it just matters like, what's yeah. in your area yeah you you want to make sure that you know if you're going to weekend it you want to be able to you know 
drive it to the shop, get it repaired, taken care of. Yeah. And you don't want to have to drive, you know, hundreds, mi hundreds of miles away mm -hmm. in order to get something simple done. Yeah. So that just creates tons of problems. So say you're at a show and you find, you know, an RV that you love and, you know, you're talking to the salesperson, just ask them. <laughs> I think that's a yep. fair question to say, well, you know, who, who would we get service from? And where would it be located? Where's mm -hmm. the closest lo location to, you know, the vicinity of where I live? It's just making sure that you go into, you know, an RV show wanting to buy an RV with your eyes wide open right. and not like it's all glitz and glam and like, oh, I just want to buy that. Because when we bought ours, we just didn't think of all of this. Right. And we've learned the hard way. Luckily, we've been able to teach you, kind of give you guys a fast pass in some areas. But and speaking of glitz and glam, we are in a Ford Winnebago Fuse. It's a B plus. Never seen it before. Wish this was inside where it was a little cooler. Yeah. But maybe we'll take you. How about how? You know what? The next video. Let's give them a tour. Let's do it. Okay, we're gonna give you a tour of this in the next video, guys. So make sure you subscribe so that you get the notification when this video goes live. This will be the next video after this one. Hopefully. We think. Maybe. We probably. Think. Probably. <laughs> Coming up. But yeah, make sure you subscribe so that, and click the bell. Click the bell, get the notifications. Yeah. That way you stay up to speed. Yeah, and it helps you guys get notified and it helps us. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. But yeah, that's all we have, right? Yeah. The one, two, three, four, five, those are the five things that you really need to consider before you even come into an RV show. Because then once you get here, you can have so much fun, you can enjoy it, you can go look at all of them. We do this for fun. We yes. go to, I mean, we own an RV, we literally go to every single RV show possible and we love it. We never get sick of it. Nope. Super fun. Enjoy it a lot. So, yeah. and if you're here in Phoenix area, maybe we'll see you. We've, we've actually seen quite a lot of you today. So shout out to everyone we saw today. Yep. All right. Awesome well, people. Yep. Okay. So until next time. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye guys. Which leads us right into number three, which is size. Size might matter. <laughs> what do you need? Should I do that again? <laughs> Size matters, Hillary. Size matters. Size matters. <laughs> Beep blooper. Okay. Mm -hmm.